the same but better I saw Deadpool 2 at the weekend, and for about half an hour I was disappointed because the film felt quite somber and flat. But then the good stuff kicked in, and I haven't laughed so much in the cinema for ages. The end credits bit in particular was exceptional. After enjoying the film my thoughts turned to the Deadpool game. Whilst the 2013 tie-in captured the character's irreverence perfectly I do recall that the actual gamma play was a boring slog, which seems a great shame. Can we ever expect another Deadpool game? If the developers got the combat right a sequel could be amazing. This made me wonder where Deadpool's developers could go for the right inspiration. Which action-adventure title has the best mixed combat? I reckon the combat system in the rebooted Tomb Raider games is rather brilliant, a perfect mix of melee fighting and guns which would suit Deadpool, although he does seem to kill enemies faster than Lara Croft. The first God of War had excellent swordplay, but of course had no guns. Did the reboot of Devil May Cry have mixed combat? Is there one particular game that emulates Deadpool's fighting style perfectly? MSV858. Alternative mode I'm not sure I understand why people are getting so upset about the lack of single-player campaign in Black Ops 4. I could understand if it was Battlefield, because adding Battle Royale to that should be relatively trivial. But Call of Duty is exactly the opposite to what is need for the mode, since it has no history with big maps, vehicles, or anything other than non-stop action. If they'd released as an entirely separate game I wouldn't have been surprised or outraged. I've seen some people say that it should be cheaper, but this makes no sense either. It's still got three modes, it's just one of them is different. And to be honest, although they've never been terrible, the Call of Duty story campaign started running out of steam with Modern Warfare 3. I'm excited to see them tackle something new, and while that may seem ironic given it's a copy of a currently fashionable mode I'm excited to play a battle royale with top-notch gunplay, something which player Unknown's Battlegrounds in particular lacks. I'm not saying the game will be good, but at least it's something different. Something which a lot of gamers claim to be in favor of, but when push comes to shove seem to complain about the minute it starts to happen. Different modes high game central, great to see you're still the best at reviews and news. I usually buy most Call of Duty games and don't bother to play the single player part of it. Would sooner play zombies or multiplayer. So you would think it wouldn't make any difference to me. But it does. Well it does, if the price is going to the same as usual. We are missing part of the full game. So the price should reflect this, but I bet it doesn't that unlikely mix I always love the idea of crossovers. Especially in media. Crossing two different franchises together is something you can hardly find nowadays. So that have me thinking, what if there is a crossover between Titanfall and Overwatch? On paper, it might sound dumb, but when you think about it, it does make for interesting stories. Like how Overwatch handle being in the middle of a large conflict. If this game were to be made, I think it should have a single-player game, where you play between two different characters. A Titanfall character and an Overwatch character. In terms of Overwatch characters, I think D. Virginia makes a perfect candidate for piloting a Titan of her own. So it makes sense for her to have her own plot in the conflict. I think this game should also should not have regenerating help, 
instead have a fixed armor and health bar with upgrades and hidden secrets throughout each level like in the Doom reboot. I know this won't happen, but all I have to say is, come on, Blizzard. Make it happen. Charles Hinkle too late hopefully this will be sent in time to be included as it's an easy hot topic for me and I presume a few others too. 80s Star Wars sit down arcade cabinet. Love the game but basically nostalgia, would never think of buying one and I think I had a copy of the game on the Atari Street, if I remember correctly. NCD catch up on every previous game's inbox here better than bowling growing up, a trip to the bowling alley used to be more about the arcade than the bowling. Seeing and hearing games like GTI Club, Sega Rally 1 and 2, Final Furlong, and Time Crisis used to be a huge event. Just thinking about it all now brings back vivid images of my local establishment. The one game which stands out, though was something I'd only ever seen and played in one bowling alley near where I grew up. It was during the heyday of the Sega arcade racers, and at home I had my Sega Saturn, waiting for the Dreamcast to be launched. Daytona USA 2 was the game in question, and luckily the arcade machine was one of the deluxe versions with the plastic wrap around dashboard, the bar behind the seat and the huge immersive screen. The whole experience was superb, and I spent many pounds in that machine, when I should have been bowling. I've seen efforts for the deluxe machine starting at pounds 3k, which means owning one is unlikely, but I can hope. A non-inbox also rants despite it all I find myself quite looking forward to seeing the new Sonic at E3. I know that sounds crazy, but if it's a crossing between Sonic and All-Stars Racing and Sonic R I actually really like the sound of that. Just because the platformers are bad doesn't mean everything has to be. Jeremy Ree, Richard Hyde and Anon, and buying a console for just one game. I understand, mate. I got away with both consoles, because my wife thinks Box One is my old original Spox. Anon this week's hot topic The subject for this weekend's inbox was suggested by reader Teflon, who asked what's the worst game you currently own? Even if it's not actually that bad what would you say is the worst game you currently have access to, either digitally or via physical media? How did you come to own the game, and why do you still have it? If the game was free what's the worst game that you actually paid money for? What's wrong with the game, in your opinion, and did you expect it to be different, or did it just end up being something you didn't enjoy? What kind of hit rate do you have in terms of buying games that you're happy with and those that end up a disappointment? Email your comments to Gamma Central at Ikmetro. Co.uk The small print new inbox updates appear twice daily, every weekday morning and afternoon. Readers' letters are used on merit and may be edited for length. You can also submit your own 500 to 600 word for player view or features at any time, which if used will be shown in the next available weekend slot. If you need quick access to the Game Central channel page please use 